I've been in here several times before, and I always enjoy hanging out with you guys. Uh, you're a fun group. It's a fun topic tonight uh, because it's so universal. And we talked about relationships, not relationships. The subject of conflict is with everything you do, with everywhere you go, as long as there's another person involved. It could be driving, right? I drove here tonight, and I wanted to be here on time, and somebody in front of me was going so slow, it's conflict. What are you going to do? You're going to fly around him? You're going to ride his tail? I drive a truck. Am I going to ride his tail to get him to go? I mean, the whole thing, conflict is in everything. So it's not just in domestic relationships. It certainly might be more visible in domestic relationships because I'm going to say things more than once tonight because it's a kind of topic that you want to hear it more than once. We, and don't write in your books yet, so don't, don't get in that. Some of you are just like dying to fill in those little dotted lines. So calm down. It's okay. Calm down. It's okay. Just listen to me for a little while. But we save our worst behavior for those that we're closest to. We save our worst behavior for those that we're closest to. We're going to talk about that again. And so <clears throat> one thing to find somebody on the road and, you know, ride his bumper or not ride his bumper. But the person that I live with that I married, I've been married 30, whatever, nine years, um, we save it for that person, <clears throat> which isn't a plus, but it's just a reality. And we'll explain why we do that kind of thing. But as we talk about the topic, and, and I should tell you now that in order to make sure that Brad gets here, I'm going to go to like 11. I hope that's okay with you guys. I mean, we'll guarantee he'll be here by that time. But it's the kind of topic where you can listen through two ears, either one, how my partner can be better at this job, or how I can be different. And you're only going to find help in this when you think about what could I do differently. I know how I handle it now, what could I do differently? And I'm not going to give you the five easy steps for conflict management because it doesn't exist. And I'm not going to tell you anything new because you know everything I'm going to say. But what I'm going to try to do is open up your eyes. The song we just sung, Open Up My Eyes. I'm going to try to get you to see things from maybe a different lens. And I really want you to see yourself. As executive coach, I work with high-level C-suite people. And awareness is not that common. Uh, there's a great study out there. About 85% of the people think they are aware. Only about 13 to 15% of us really are aware. So we're not always aware of how we handle conflict. For us, it's normal. It's my normal way of handling conflict. But is it really healthy? And that's what I want you to think about. It's normal, but is it healthy? And the older we get, I mean, I'm not old, but some people are a lot older than me. The older we get, the more the cement is pretty hard. And so I've always done it this way, and it's the way I'm always going to be. And that's okay, but I would want to challenge you a little bit. If it's working, keep going. It's great. It's a great, it's a great rhythm. If it isn't working sometimes, then what could I do differently and when? So you're going to want to really think about your own response. Um, I talk fairly fast, so I'm really going to try to slow this thing down. It's not my natural rhythm to go slow, and so I, it's my natural rhythm to fly, and so I've got to really slow it down. But if you ever have any questions, if you, just raise your hand. It's, we've got six or seven hours. It's not a problem. <laughs> just raise your hand. It's not a monologue. It's, I, like, I like more dialogue. But I like the, the verse in the book where it says, Psalm 133, 1, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. I mean, just the sound of that verse is just like, it's like zen. It's like, oh, it is so nice. I'm sure you've heard the phrase before, to live above with those we love will certainly be glory. But to dwell below with those we know, that's, that's another story. And so it's hard, hard to live with people. And we're dwelling together in unity. Another translation says harmony. Well, harmony means there's different notes, the orchestra has different instruments, but they're all on the same page of music. But when we're in a relationship, either close, intimate, distant, whatever, we're not always on the same page because God created diversity. And that sounds so poetic and it sounds so nice. But it's a pain in the neck when somebody thinks differently than I do. If everybody thought like me, it'd be a perfect place. Well, no, it wouldn't be, but we think that. And there's never diversity as evident as in marriage, right? God made you totally different and said, here, get along. Oh, without me, you'll fail. So it's tough. And so the subject of conflict, for some of you, you just don't even want to talk about it. Like, it's just, let's just make it go away. Like, it's better if we never had it. I was going to ask for a show of hands, but I won't do that, because you're not going to raise your hand, because that'll be conflict in itself. I don't want to tell them. I just don't want to tell them. <laughs> but I do have a question, though. Let's see, a live question. <clears throat> 
Who's had a good, healthy conflict in the last three minutes before I come up here? Anybody have some good, healthy table, conversa- table conflict? Last hour? You're just not going to say it. You've got conflict, but you're just not going to say it. I was going to give you a top prize of $100, but I'm not going to do that now because you won't come out and tell you. So it happens all the time. It's just part of life. It happens all the time. <clears throat> There's a great verse in Romans that's not in your book. Romans 12, uh, verse 18. Do all you can to live in peace with everyone. Do all you can to leave, live in peace with everyone, which means sometimes you just can't. Sometimes there's not, we're not able to be at peace. And so conflict, it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's very situational. It's very situational. It depends a lot on how you're wired. Some of you are wired to kind of, you're in it to win it. That's the way you're wired. You're very competitive. We're going to win this thing. It's not a problem at all. It's always my way. We'll be fine. Right? We'll do it my way. Let's go. And some of you are like a common, whatever you want. No, no, no go you, you first, whatever you want. There's all kinds of people. So how we're wired, how we've been living life, whether we're younger or older, sort of our experiences, our nurturing, what we saw modeled, what we didn't see modeled. Uh, some of you think that conflict, aggressive conflict is normal. I mean, everybody, right? No, not everybody. And then some of it's very situational. I was recently on a trip to Winnipeg, Canada. I hate the Canadian border. I'll just go ahead and say that if it's all recorded, I'm in, in trouble. But I hate the Canadian border. Those guys are paid to be less than pleasant. And so I went across the border, and I was up there for business. And I made a couple mistakes in saying why I was there. You don't go in there and say you're being a consultant, because they don't like consultants. I should have said I'm going to a meeting, but I wasn't well trained in that one. So I went across the border, and I, I got meetings, I got to go. I'm on a hurry. When I'm, when I'm in that pressurized mode, when we're in our pressurized mode, our natural drive comes out, or whatever, it's good or bad. And I can be competitive, surprise. I can be competitive. I can go for the gold. I can be in it to win it. So I get this border patrol, like, stand over in this room over here. And I get a 45-minute interrogation. Well, I'm in it to win it. I mean, I'm going to blow this guy out. I'm going to get right through him. We're going to get through this. And I quickly realize that this guy has the power to say, see you, bye, go home. And I wanted to be there to do business. And so I had to, in the moment, change my conflict management style because I was aware that this situation is not going to work with my usual style. And I had to pivot at the last minute. And I became very accommodating. I became very collaborative. We're going to work together. I ended up getting a work permit, blah, blah, blah. All that to say, conflict is a, is a variety of components, one of which is what situation am I in? It makes a big difference. I feel like I'm getting feedback up in the sound booth. Are you getting feedback from me as well? Sound booth. Yo, sound booth. Sound booth. There we go. Am I, it felt like I was getting ice back in my ears. So... I want you to listen more than just fill in the blanks on those pages. It's easy to do that, but I really want you to listen um, because I want, you to, I want you to hear things maybe differently. Nothing new. No revolutionary, new hot off the press. No, it's, it's just normal stuff I do every day. And I deal with leaders. I deal with individuals. I don't do counseling anymore, so that's one thing that i got to correct that. I used to do that for 25 years, but those days are over. I just do executive coaching. But I've got a guy that I work with in... Texas, a brilliant guy, incredibly smart, incredibly high up in this massively big aerospace engineering company. And when it comes to handling conflict, he's in it to win it. And he'll just go around any chain of command and just blow right through it. This guy's, he's 55. He's younger than me, but he's an old guy. And uh, he, he just, he knows the right thing to do, but he has a hard time doing it. And that's what I want you to think through tonight is I know the right thing to do, but I don't always do it. And that's all of us. It's all of us. There's no one that's got the subject master because it's, it's not a get it and you're done. You're always evolving on the subject. So, go ahead. Open your books and get into that page where you can start filling in the blanks there. This is the good stuff. And kick me out the first slide. Conflict is necessary. Some of you totally disagree with that statement, but it is necessary. And it's expected when two people are together, that they're different. And every one of us really are different. I make my living interacting with people. And I'm with different people all the time. So it's necessary. So though, there are those of you in this room that say, I just want to go away. And that is not sustainable. It's not realistic. So the next slide says, conflict is unavoidable, true or false. 
True or false? True. It's unavoidable. Now, does that mean we have to fight all the time? No. No. Conflict doesn't mean we fight. We just disagree. I want Italian, you want Asian. I want to go, my wife and I are very different. After 39 years, you'd think we'd figure it out. We have figured it out. We're different. She is dual citizenship. She's from, she has Bahamian citizenship and American citizenship. Where do you think she likes to go on vacation? North or south? South. I'm from Chicago. I love to ski. I love the mountains. Where do I want to go? North. Those directions aren't the same. So we always have an element of difference. We don't fight about it. I just give in all the time. No, it's, it's <laughs> I just learn when to lose. And that's, a, that's an expression that's not in your books. But that is a big part of conflict is learn when to lose. Because there there's a lot of in there for notes. And I'm going to give you stuff that's not in those little fill in the blanks things too. But to learn when to lose is an important part of it. Especially with somebody that's important to you. And we'll talk about that. Conflict is inevitable. True, false? True, true. It's inevitable. And again, we're redefining conflict. It doesn't mean we're fighting. It just means an element of friction. So I want to show you this picture on the, uh, on the screen. You've got one at your table. Please take that with you. It's an important diagram, which is theory, but all starts with theory. I'm going to go briefly over it, and you're going to see this up again and again. There's four ways to handle conflict. We're going to talk about that. Avoidance, confrontation, collaboration, and accommodation. Um, there's no one right way. There's no one right way. And we're going to talk more about this later. And, uh, strangely missing on there is a word that we all love, which is what? Starts with a C? Compromise. Can we just compromise? How about if we just compromise? It sounds so poetic. I like, I like uh, dogs. My wife doesn't like dogs. Let's compromise. Let's get a half a dog. I mean, you don't pull that one off. You have a dog or you don't have a dog. We don't have a dog. I learned to lose. We don't have a dog. She doesn't like motorcycles. I like motorcycles. Well, we'll just get a bicycle. No, I like motorcycles. I have a motorcycle. She loses, I win. I mean, it's that kind of stuff. Now, she has assured me that if I end up brain dead or brain alive, body dead in the nursing home, she's done. It's your issue. You did it. See you later. Bye. I'm okay with that. But it's that compromise I'm not, I'm not fond of because it's sort of this fake sense where we're all going to just kumbaya, group hug, happy. So it's not on there for a reason. And we'll talk more about that. Let's go to Psalm 35. Here's a fun psalm. Oh, Lord, oppose those who oppose me. Fight those who fight against me. You know, if everybody would just think like me, this is coming from David who knew he was super innocent and he really had people seeking to kill him. But we sometimes think like that. If my whatever partner, if my driver, if my other person, if my kid, if my whatever would just get their act together, we could get along a lot better. And it sounds so good, but you're part of the problem. I hate to tell you that. You... You, 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 you are part of the problem. You, you, you are part of the solution. And so, God, how can I learn to be better as a result of this friction in my relationship, whatever it is, how can I learn to grow? How can I learn to be more holy? That is the goal. How can I be more Christ-like through this friction? If you're old enough to have adult kids or teenage kids who can look you in the face and say, I hate you, you've wrecked my life, that's just part of life, what can I learn from that? Let's go to the next slide. Conflict is not always synonymous with fighting. It doesn't mean you don't occasionally have some fights, but fighting is really meaning I've just rolled my emotions into this argument, and now I'm really pent up, and I really want to talk to you about it, we're not, this is not an argument anymore. I'm going to shout you down. Let me be the first to say that unless there's um, oh, guns involved, if there's a tornado coming, if there's a, a catastrophe coming, there's really no need to raise your voice. Because when you raise your voice, you then become a little bit more dominant in the conversation. 
And then you're trying to win it. We talked about rules of engagement. This is not in your book. I strongly suggest rules of engagement for yourself and the one you're with. Role playing. I am so ticked off right now. I just, I need a break. I just, if I go any further, I'm going to lose it. Rules of engagement. You know, you pull your ear, you do whatever it is that says, uh, we need to step away from this. And that's a, one good tactic for when you feel like your emotions are getting too hot and you're actually going to fight. But some of you, it's normal to raise your voice. The kids only hear me when I raise my voice. Well, they've trained you. I love one of my favorite ones when I heard a mother screaming at her kids saying, will you stop screaming? Okay, why don't you model what that looks like? And so once the fighting begun, has begun, we're not really handling conflict anymore. And you're more emotionally adrenaline driven and you've kind of lost a little bit of it. I was in a conversation, I was in a situation this week with a, another couple and I was mad. Stuff was happening, I was mad. And I said to myself, self, don't say a word. Because if you say something right now, it's going to be the wrong thing. Think about it tomorrow. If you feel the same way, have a conversation, but nothing now. And I'm glad because in the next day, which was yesterday, it's like, you know, I need to look at that differently. And so awareness, I saved myself from embarrassment. I would have said things I would have wanted to take them back, but I couldn't take them back. And it would have been a fight. And it was the wrong time. I knew where I was at. I self-regulated. That is huge when it comes to conflict management, to avoid the fight Next slide, conflict is the, <clears throat> is the result of an effort to get your needs met. That's a very broad brush. It's an effort to get your needs met. I'm arguing with you because something as simple as that, I want the last cookie, and you're going to take the last cookie, I want it. I'm arguing because I want the money to buy this thing that I really want this dress, I really want it. I want to get my needs met, and I'm arguing with you about money. But it can also be deeper. I just want to be heard. I feel like you never listen to me. You just don't listen to me. I want to be heard. Don't fix me. Women, right? Don't fix me. Just listen to me. We men, what do we do? We fix. We naturally fix. Let's fix it. If it's broken, let's fix it. I just want you to listen to me. Will you stop trying to fix everything I do? And so I'm trying to get my needs met. Whatever the need is. Need for validation. Need for love. Fill in the blank need. The guy that was in front of me at night, I need to go faster because I need to get there in time. I have a need. And so to, to stop and say, what's my need, is really tough. Because when I'm really angry, I don't stop. I just keep rolling. But after a while, you debrief from it in your own mind afterward. What was I trying to get? And was it really the most effective way of getting it? No. What should I do differently next time? And much of what I'll say is, what should I do differently next time? You blew it. That's fine. No worries. You blew it. What should I do differently next time? It's the, chronicity, it's the chronicity of it. I keep doing it. I keep doing it. I keep doing it. Is it working? No, but I keep doing it. Okay, the definition of, you know, insanity, we all know that. But it's almost like I can't stop myself because it's now muscle memory, and I automatically do it. So tonight's an opportunity to say, well, I do it, and occasionally, depending on the situation, it works, but it's really not that healthy or it's not sustainable. So what should I do differently? And we'll exp I'll explain more of this as we go. Conflict, conflict brings clarity, next, relation, next slide, to a relationship. It brings clarity to a relationship. And you might think to the contrary, like there's no way it brings clarity. It's inherent if you're with another person, especially in a marriage situation, but not only. I really understand what you need because you shared it with me. I'm a classic male. I was guilty of the same, let me fix all your problems. Until she said one time, I don't want you to fix it. I'm like, oh, I didn't really know that. I thought it was my job to fix everything. No, shut up and listen, would you? And so there's a clarity that comes from conflict. And so for those of you who say conflict is of the devil, don't do it ever. If you're a Christian, you never have conflict. That's just not true. I do surmise that before the fall, there might not have been conflict, but we, it's irrelevant now. But So conflict might be a result of sin in the world. I'm okay with that. But I'm still stuck with the fact that God made us so different, so different. Some of you like a lot of minutia, a lot of detail. Some of you are good with the big picture, high-level view, whatever. It's all good. I'm the second guy. Big picture, high level. My wife, she likes a lot of minutia. I'm not really interested in that. But when I'm with her, I need to be interested in that because that's her language. So 
through conflict, I understand more clearly that she needs a lot of really precise information. Vacations, let's go and see what happens. Let's jump off the cliff together. There's no jumping off the cliff together with my wife. When we're in an airport, we look like a three-hour layover. Let's, like, go visit the city. Well, you we might miss our plane. We've got a three-day layover. Maybe we should go visit the city. We might miss our plane. You know, so a little bit of exaggeration, but I'm a, I'm a risk taker. I'm a huge risk taker. She is not. She likes things in a box and controlled. Not right, not wrong. I'm not making fun of her. I'm just explaining the fact that we're all different. So the conflict brings clarity to the relationship. I understand her at a deeper level. Now, what do I do with that understanding? That's the key thing. Do I blow it off? Do I override it? No one to win, no one to lose. I think Kenny Rogers said that, the great theologian. The next uh, slide. Here's this is big. This is really big. How well you manage conflict is the number one predictor, the number one predictor, not spirituality, not anything else. How well you manage conflict is a predictor of relational, relational longevity and relational satisfaction. I don't do marriage counseling anymore. But when I did for decades, I'll tell in a pretty quick heartbeat how long this relationship is going to last. Because we're two different people. We're either going to handle it well or we're not going to handle it well. So I use the word manage. Some of you cringe. I just want to go away. I want no conflict in our relationship. Not possible. You're going to manage it. That is the single most important element. And it never goes away. Am I boring you because I'm afraid you've yawned like four times and I'm feeling bad? Am I causing people to be sleepy? I want to be sensitive to that. <laughs> what is, she has a need for more oxygen. She's just trying to get more of it. But that's a big deal in your marriage. It's not communication, it's not money, it's not sex, all that stuff. It's how we handle conflict. I just caused her extreme embarrassment. <laughs> For that, I apologize. I've stepped over the line. Let's go to the next one. A relationship without conflict is like driving a car on a frozen pond. Perfectly smooth, but no direction. Now again, I want to qualify that. I'm not talking about fighting. Remember, I'm not a fan of that word fighting. I am a fan of the word conflict. But if I see a couple Oh, we agree on everything. Somebody is really lying. Or somebody's got somebody in the headlock. Because we never agree on everything. And that's okay. But when we agree on everything, first of all, you're not married yet if you agree on everything. <laughs> give, me a, give me a year, come back and talk to me. Because here's a lot of stuff we don't agree on. That's fine. It's like driving a car in that frozen pond. It's really, really smooth, but there's just no control. There's no braking. There's no steering. There's no direction. We, where are we going to go with this? But the flip side of that is a relationship with too much conflict is like driving a car with four flat tires. We can't go anywhere. We can't go anywhere. My father-in-law, my wife, dual citizenship to the Bahamas. My father-in-law is Bahamian. And so he just passed about a month and a half ago. He was older. And he and his wife, not my wife's mother, this is his second wife, Surprise, you couldn't handle the conflict in the first one. So it's a second marriage. Um, their relationship was one of those relationships. It's not common. They fought for intimacy, meaning they were at each other's throat all the time, loud. And they both had hard of hearing, which is even better for those of us. Do you think you might want to get some hearing? No, no, I'm just fine. I can hear fine. And so they would shout at each other all the time. And... The hurricane hit the Bahamas, the islands where he lives in 219. He came and lived with us for three months. It felt a little bit like three years, but it was a lovely time for intimacy. <laughs> but he was bitey, and then she came up there, and she was bitey, and they were just bitey all the time. But it worked. It worked for them. And I'm not, I'm not joking when I say this. It totally worked for them. And so he's gone now. And I was just over at the house talking to her, and she doesn't know what to do. Like, she has no one to fight with. And it's evident that she lived on that sort of that tension, that fighting. And so there's no right way for conflict management. Now, that's not extremely common, and that's not extremely uh, suggested, 
But it worked. It had a rhythm, and it worked for those guys. It was, I don't know, 30 whatever years. It worked for them. But she is like a fish out of water now because there's no one to fight with. And she got hearing aids, finally, whatever that was for. She got hearing aids, so she talks in a softer voice. Go figure. But that was almost like driving with four flat tires, but it wasn't because it worked. So I'm really trying to paint a broad picture. There's no one right way. We'll get into more of that. 67%, two-thirds of all conflict in marriage never goes away. Two-thirds, 67%. I can give you a long list of things my wife and I will never agree on. Do we fight about them? No. We know that we don't agree. So we sort of have moved into a rhythm. I'm from the Chicago, she's from the Bahamas. I like it cold, she likes it warm. So we've sort of adjusted our lives where all summer long, she wears a sweater because the house is colder than she would like it. All winter long, I wear shorts because the house is a heck of a lot warmer than I like it. But it's that, it's that knowing when to lose. I lose all winter long. And she loses all summer long. And I don't mean that with any disrespect. It's just sort of the rhythm that we got into. So we're never going to agree on temperature. You know, they make bed covers that have dual weight down on one side and the other. It was the best thing in our lives for our marriage because I'm pretty hot and she's pretty cold. And one side's this thick and one side's it's great. Some of you are nodding like you got one of those things. We'll spend any amount of money for bed covers that are split in the middle. But that's one area that we'll never agree on. Her extremities get cold all the time. I, not so much. So it's a depressing number, but it's a real number. And if you've been married for a while, you understand that number. It's not a, it's not a judgment. It's not a, a death sentence. And it's just a reality. For those of you who don't like conflict, 67% never goes away. So there's four ways to manage conflict. I'm going to put that chart up here. Um, always there are, I, I think back up one slide, I think we might have missed a... Uh, you know, there's no fill in the blanks there. I want to make sure it didn't get anybody who had to fill in the blanks. Um, always are appropriate, but it depends on the person. Let's go back to the next, let's go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, the confrontation, collaboration, accommodation, and avoidance. And somewhere in there is there going to be that picture. Is it the next one up, the picture? There it is, good. So make sure you got the, the picture in your table. So here's where we're going to get into sort of what does that picture mean. There's dozens of those on the Internet. I happen to have that one made up for me. But the left-hand column, the vertical axis is the importance of the issue. You don't need to write this down. Just grab the one off your table and write on that one because they're on your table. Everybody's got a color copy. The vertical axis is the importance of the issue. The horizontal axis is the importance of the relationship. And this is where you need to really understand this. This is pretty critical. There's always a tension between the importance of the issue and the importance of the relationship. There's always a built-in tension. I could give you a million examples, but there's always a tension. Hence, 67% never goes away. For the sake of the relationship, we don't have a dog. What box did I decide to camp out in? I didn't hear it. I wanted the dog. Accommodation. So for the sake of the relationship, I let go of the issue. I have a motorcycle. Which box did I use? She doesn't like motorcycles, didn't want a motorcycle. Confrontation. So I risked it that I'm going to be okay in the relationship. And so for that one, I won, and I have it. But there's always a tension. There's always a tension. And so you're making decisions in the moment. What's more important, the relationship or the issue? You say that. You say that. I hear you. And I'm not doubting what you just said. My point is, it's not always that. I couldn't sleep two nights ago because that blanket, whatever it was, was about 90 pounds heavier than I wanted, even with my light side. we got to get that blanket off the bed. I can't sleep tonight. Get that thing out of here. I, cannot, I can't live with that. It's too hot in the house. 
So there's times when both of them are appropriate. So I'm not painting a picture, a rosy picture of what's always one, it's always the other. Any one of those boxes is appropriate depending on what's going on. Here's the real nemesis. And I don't know if, yeah. The next slide, then we might go back. Go to the next slide. The danger zone of managing conflict arises when you only have one way to manage yourself. When you only have one way, I always do what? And hopefully, you don't always do what? Back up to the previous slide for a second. If somebody simply decides to stonewall and walk away, which one is that on there? Avoidance. There's a time to avoid, but if that's my only thing I do, Am I working on the relationship? No. Am I working on the issue? No. I'm doing neither. But there might be a time for that. I, you know, do what you want, that's fine. I don't care what you want. Whatever you want is fine, I don't care. There's a time for that. But if that's the only thing you do, you're gonna trump it. You're gonna trump the relationship. Am I getting too complex or is this making sense? The tension, is it making sense? It's always there. Don't try to get rid of it, but understand what your role should be depending on the situation, depending on what's going on. I'm sure you guys come up with your own examples of when you've practiced any one of those. The danger comes in when this is what I always do. You know what? I'm in it to win it. I'm a competitive person. I'm going to win. And it's great when you see new couples. When they first start out, it's all lovey-dovey. And then about a year later, I'm not getting what I want. My needs aren't being met. Here's what I really want. I'm going after it. And then the war begins, and it's not all that effective. If there's a sweet spot on here, what might that be? A sweet spot might be collaboration. And maybe that's where you folks who really like compromise shows up. And that is the sweet spot. It's not always possible. I really felt that God had called me from Chicago to Bowling Green, Ohio, which is where I now preside for the last 36 years. My wife was involved in her career in hospital management in, she was going through school in Chicago area. And I really felt like God called me here. And I had to make a decision. And one of us has got to kind of decide what's God saying in our lives. And I felt like I need to pull rank. I needed to say, you know what, we need to go. I think we really need to go. Now, it's 36 years later, and there's no doubt it was the right decision. I'm not saying I was the right guy. Can't you see that? No, I'm simply saying I took a risk. To your point of it's always the relationship. In that case, it wasn't. It was the fact that I really feel like God's calling us. She didn't feel the same. She submitted. She followed. And in hindsight, she's in a much better place where she is, and this was all, everything's been great. Forget that. It's the point, there's a different place for different times. But if you do it out of emotion only, you're never going to know when to pivot. And pivot is a big word. Pivot and adapt. Those are two really big words. I've adapted to a warmer than I would like house in the wintertime. And I just wear shorts. I've adapted to a lot of vacations that are in the sun and the heat. For God forsaken heat. The Bahamas. You know how it is in the Bahamas? It's a billion degrees. So what did I do? I picked up scuba diving. She's laying on the beach getting burned like a lobster, and I'm 80 feet underwater just loving life. It works. I used to go down there with a really bad attitude because I don't like that much heat. And I said to myself, self, you might want to get it together because this isn't working. It's not sustainable. So I said to myself, what can I do differently? Pick up scuba diving. I love to dive. I'm underwater. The temperature's beautiful. It's not a conflict with us because she doesn't want to be talked to when she's laying baking anyhow. Just don't talk to me. Leave me alone. And don't put your shade over me. Don't put your shadow over me because that's going to be awkward burn. <laughs> Better that I just go diving. But it worked. And when I go skiing in Breckenridge, guess who's not with me? But it's okay. We figured that one out. I mean, it's okay. It's, we've kind of come to an arrangement. Any one of those are possible as long as you don't camp out in one. How am I doing on time? Oh, my gosh, it's a little bit later than I thought. Um, you, know what's miss, you know what's interestingly missing? i got to say this. Interestingly missing on that one also 
is passive aggressive. Ooh, ooh, I kind of like that one. That one actually works pretty well. Which one of those is passive aggressive? Trick question, but it's, there's an answer. Which one of those is passive aggressive? Both, avoidance and confrontation. It's avoidance and confrontation. Where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. You pick. No, no, you pick. Anywhere you want to go is fine. Well, let's go to this place. I don't want to go there. <laughs> okay, how about this place? No, I don't want to go there. Where do you want to go? I don't care. You pick. <laughs> You've all been there. It's as common as rain. And so as a husband who fixes things, now we're just really frustrated. We don't know what to do with that one. That's as passive aggressive as it comes. I was with a couple the other night helping on a couple because I have a truck. When you're a truck, you help people. Hey, come help us move rocks. They couldn't figure out this thing. Passive aggressive, passive aggressive. It was driving me nuts. I was so angry. That was a time, like, don't say anything. Just don't say anything. Just, don't, just walk away. Wait till they're done figuring this stuff out. But it, I could see where it was going. And the guy could use a little bit of leadership development because he's trying to be a leader. And she wants him to lead, but she doesn't know how to let go of the reins. And he doesn't know how to lead without just like blowing up. So since he doesn't blow up, he just avoids. That's fine. I just won't do anything. And then he does something, and then he doesn't do anything. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but to, <laughs> that was a good snort. To his, uh, <laughs> to his defense, I really don't think he knows a better way. He had a terrible role model growing up. He's 40-ish. I don't think he really knows a better way. When I calm myself down, I said, we ought to go out. I said to myself, we ought to go out for a beer together sometime. I'm going to share a little leadership development with you. Because I really don't think he knows. And so in defense of those of you who are doing it wrong, now that you're kind of hearing it, it's quite possible you just don't know a better way, which is why I'm trying to show you the theory behind it so you can make a better judgment decision and say, what's more important, the issue of the relationship? And know when to pivot. I had a buddy of mine who was just wrapped around the axle around blue drapes in the bedroom. I said, dude, that is not your bedroom. It's hers. If they're chartreuse or pink, let it go, man. That's her bedroom. Let her do what she wants in her bedroom. Well, it just shouldn't be that way. Take a chill pill. And so he was wrapped around the axle around the issue. He was all issue. Work in the relationship. I don't care. Let's do whatever. Let, figure it out. When to lose, when to win. But passive aggressive is about as effective as triangulation. I will say that really quickly and I'm going to move on from that one. It's not in your notes. Triangulation is when you end up with one person trying to mediate two people. That only really works if you're a cop, a referee, a judge, a person of authority that really doesn't negotiate between two people. The worst case scenario is the dad coming home and telling the kid to listen to their mother and respect your mother and obey your mother. It seems really good on paper. It's a terrible triangulation. Because then the mother in that picture is powerless. And the dad's the cop. He's got all the power. So when dad's not around, it's open season on the mother. The mother's got to figure out how she's going to handle conflict with her own kid. The dad's got to figure out how he handles conflict with his own kid. Triangulation is terrible. It's common as rain, and it feels right. I'm the head of the household. I'll decide how my kids treat their mother. Yeah, but it doesn't really work. So I was playing a game one time quite a few years ago. My daughter's 36. She was a lot younger. We were playing a game, and she and her mother got into an estrogen battle about something. You know, it happens. You know, women kind of fight a little differently. She got an estrogen battle with her mother, and she said, Dad, do something. I said, not my issue. And in that moment, it wasn't. They were fighting about rules. My wife loves rules in case you didn't notice. And I'm like, that's eh, good enough. It's close. Whatever. It'll work. Yeah, whatever. And she and she's wired like me. And so she and my, her mother, my wife, were at it. I said, it's not my deal. Figure it out. And that was sort of a trend for going forward is that triangulation doesn't work. When you're in the middle of a relationship with another person, unless you're a cop, a judge, a ruler, a mediator, yo, Oh, triangulation is when one person is trying to in, in, uh, in, uh, in, um, in, put themselves in, inject, I can't find the word, Inter, um, mediate, whatever, get in between two other people. One person is trying to get in between two other people. And you don't have a position of authority. I'm a mediator. I'm mediating a relationship right now in Connecticut with a couple of people from Wells Fargo. I'm the neutral party. I'm mediating. But I'm not connected to these two people. But as a partner in a family, you're part of the system. You're not a mediator. So when a dad or mom tries to tell the child how to treat the other parent, that's triangulation. 
You put yourself in the middle of two other people for the betterment of those two people, which on paper seems right, but you just cut the legs off one of the people because you're saying they can't do it on themselves. I'll stay with that as long as you want. It's a pretty important concept. I wasn't, it's not in the notes. It's above and beyond that. Was there any more questions on that, like you're doing it and you haven't figured out that you're doing it until right now? Did anyone want to talk about that? I mean, ask for a friend. You know, you know a friend who's doing that kind of a thing, yeah. <laughs> it's very common. It just doesn't work. We'll move on. Um, what is the next slide? Yeah, I said that before, but I want to say it again. We, we save our worst behavior for the person we're closest to. Isn't that kind of awkward, but true? We save our worst behavior. There's reasons for that. I often say to my clients, would you treat your customers or your clients that way? Well, no, I would never do that. Well, then treat your spouse or your person at home like a customer or client. We come, we come home. The Japanese have a term. You ever heard this? Open the kimono. You familiar with that term? Japanese have open the kimono. The obvious being... I'm vulnerable. And so we come home and we're vulnerable. And we let our guard down. We let our filters down. I've held it up all day. I'm going to unleash on you. Well, that's not really healthy, not sustainable. Versus I've had a really hard day. I, just for the next half hour, let's not get into anything controversial. And then let's talk about it maybe later on, whenever. I'm not a night person. I knock off about 9 o'clock. Boop, boop, I'm about ready to go to bed because I get up at 4 every day. My wife is just kind of the opposite. She'll go into the night, but she's not a morning person. So <laughs> early on, it was quite the game. We tried to have interaction when, you know, one of us was off. It never worked well. I couldn't figure out why. Well, I don't have any conversation after like nine. It's more like, uh-huh, okay, that's great. I love it. Everything's perfect. Great. It's good night. I'm not a fit person to have conflict. Conflict is part of relationship. And in the morning, I don't, anything good, good morning, it's, it's a day. Have a great one. We'll see you later. Bye. That's not our time to talk. We don't talk. Not right, not wrong. It's just our rhythm. It's just our rhythm. But we save our worst behavior for the person that we're closest to. Kids, unfortunately, can really get the brunt of that. That's the stuff that I hate, and that's stuff I did a lot of, and I don't do it anymore. Is the whole child abuse thing. Kids are just defenseless, but they get it. Uh, they get the abuse because the parents save their worst behavior for the ones they're closest to. And they can't really fight back. So the, the home should be a safe place, but we sometimes make it a not safe place because we know enough to really penetrate our partner's heart and soul because we know how to get to them because nobody knows them as well as we do. And so when the emotions get going, is the time to realize that I'm being either offensive or I'm going to get angry or something's going to happen and rules of engagement, I'll say it again. We need something that says now is not a good time. We can't, we can't go there. Anybody around here ever get hangry? I haven't had dinner yet. I'm really ticked off and I'm really hungry and I'm angry. Okay, then don't have deep conversations about the next 20 years of your life together. Not this, let me just eat. Can, can we just eat first? Let's, pardon me, but let's just eat first and then we'll talk. You're a different person. You know, we laugh because it's so true, but yet we do it. Versus awareness says, I'm not in a good space right now. Now is not a good time. Next slide. In conflict, there's always a tension, right, between the importance of the issue and the importance of the relationship. We showed you that before. But I want you to memorize that. I want you to know that. I want you to think about that. It's so relevant. What's the importance of the issue? What's the importance of the relationship? And if they're both really, really important, that's the time to do what? See how well you've learned these boxes? Collaborate. Collaborate. Yeah. Here's what I want you to do. Um, put the next slide up. This is on your table. So I want you to make sure you take one of those when you go, or take 10 of them and put them on the refrigerator and tape them, tape them on the front of your eyelids or something. Um, but I want you to spend another, uh, what, is the, what does the book say, from 7.30 to 7.45, 15 minutes. Next slide. Here's the things I want you to consider at your table. First of all, write this down. No, no, back it up. Back up where you were. Write this down in your book. My default way of managing conflict is what? And it's different for all of us. By default, we most of us have one. 
We might have more than one, but I told you by default, mine is confrontation. I'm in it to win it. But I have to learn when to pivot, when to adapt. I now have three grandchildren, live across the street. I do a ton of accommodating. Oh, what a difference. It's so much fun when they're grandkids. But I, do, I don't confront those kids. I just kind of get yeah, whatever you need. You know, Pappy gives them whatever they want. I'm your classic Pappy. But my default mode of managing conflict is what? So I want you to write that down. It's for, for, for your own benefit so you can really think that one through. Maybe you haven't thought about that. But you all have one. You all have one. Unless you're Jesus and you're perfect. And then come and see me because I want to meet you. And so for the next 15 minutes, here's what I want you to think and talk about at your tables. Next. What's your natural default mode? Share it. It might be one or two. Share it with each other. What's the one thing you now know you need to do differently in your handling of yourself in conflict? And what's the one thing you now realize works well with your style of conflict? I'm really good at. So share a little bit. We've got about 15 minutes. We'll come back and we'll have some questions if you want. And then we'll go until 11, like I said before. You know, so spend some time in your groups. And be vulnerable. Open the kimono. Here's my style because everybody's got a style. All right, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to take over. So right now, can you kick, kick, kick me back on? There we go. So right now, what mode of conflict am I, am I using right now? What mode of conflict am I using? Which one of those four am I using right now? Confrontation. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to be in charge. There's only one person going to talk. It's going to be me. There's a time for it. I'm leading the group. I'm not investing in any of the relationships at this very second, but I just sort of trumped you all. And so there's a time for it. I'm not being rude. I'm not being obnoxious. I'm just saying for the sake of this t night, since it's not 11 o'clock yet, we got some time to talk about, we need to keep going. Well, I dipped my head into a couple tables, and it was aggressive conversation. I love it. And so <laughs> there's several things and I'm not joking when it comes to time. It's the kind of thing where we could talk for a couple hours. By the way, I teach this, I teach on this for like a three-hour block. So for me to get this done in 50 minutes is really, it's very surfacey. Um, here's a couple things to put in your notes. This is not, not in the fill in the blank. Put these two words down, complex and, and complicated. Put those two words down, complex and allow space for definition. Complex and complicated. Complex and complicated. And I bet you've never thought of this before. I'm not being a genius. I'm just helping you understand uh, life. <clears throat> Complex is my new phone that I just got. Excuse me. Complicated is my new phone that I just got. Complicated is my phone that I got. There's a manual on this. Somebody who might be wired differently than me knows how to take it apart and put it back together. It's complicated, but they can figure it out. I can't. Somebody can. It's complicated. Complex is that chocolate chip cookie dough that I made with my grandkids. Once it's together, you're not taking it apart. The cream, the sugar, the butter, the eggs, the milk, once it's in there, it's in there. Things that are complex, I have to lean into. Things that are complicated, fix it. Figure it out. Get the manual out. Understand it. Fix it. Are humans complicated or are they complex? Very. Very. And so some of you are throwing ideas at me. Some of you are asking questions that are really complex. And the reason it's important to know the difference between those two is one of those is fixable. Should we get blue drapes or white drapes? We can fix that. Well, the carpet is this, is that. Do, 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 do. We fix it. How should we raise our child? What kind of discipline should we use? What happens if I'm doing homeschooling and I'm a mom and I'm really fried at the end of the day? Those are complex. I'm sick right now. I don't feel like it. That's complex. Anything that comes up that's it's, it's, it's just we can't fix it, that's complex. And so the important thing in life is to realize what's complicated and what's complex. Because some things we just can't figure out. We're going to have to lean into them. When I say lean into them, we start where it is. When you put your cream and your sugar and your coffee, you're not taking the cream and sugar out. You might want to add more cream. 
might want to add more sugar. You might want to add more coffee. But it is. It's that thing. So some things in life are complex. Some things in life are complicated. There was another brilliant thought, but I didn't write it down. Somebody asked me something. One question that was good was, uh, what happens when uh, the other person doesn't want, to comp- uh, doesn't want to collaborate? Flick back to that uh, picture slide, if you wouldn't mind, or go forward to the picture. There it is. What happens when one person doesn't want to collaborate? That's right. The conflict is two people. And it's a great question. It's also a complex question. And you can't collaborate alone. And what is collaboration? Somebody said, isn't it compromise? It's part of. It means we're going to work together. The issue is really important. The relationship is really important. Let's put our heads together and try to figure this out. But it might not be today. It might be the kind of thing like, we really can't come up with a resolution today. Let's pray about it, which is good, but can be used as an excuse. Let's give it some time to think about it, which is often for some people, they have time to process. Some of you are slow processors. Some of you are fast processors. No judgment, just a reality. And if you're a slow processor, you know what? I just need time. I just need time. I just need time to think about it. No problem. But one thought I had is if the other person is consistently, chronically not collaborating, then something is a need that's not being met. Help me understand the three words that I use all the time. Help me understand. It seems like I'm trying to collaborate you, with you, but you don't want to collaborate back. Help me understand what I'm missing. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you need something. Maybe the other person says, yeah, you're not listening to me. What am I not hearing? Help me understand what I'm not hearing. Help me understand is a great way to start. But somebody else said it was never able to collaborate, never, 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 which is called stonewalling, which means I'm just not going to talk to you, which means I'm not going to open the kimono, which means I'm not going to be vulnerable, which means, like, we're just going to be roommates. Because marriage, this is extra credit, is a combination of both being interdependent and independent. If marriage is all interdependent, somebody's got somebody in a headlock. If marriage is all independent, we're just roommates. And so it's this thing that goes on in a marriage. And it's this thing that goes on in conflict resolution. I will field as many questions as you want. I had a couple more things I want to say, but I'd rather get the questions are so rich. They're so good. This clearly is hitting people where it relates to you. Questions, fire away. Inherent in his comment, and I'm not, I'm not picking on you, but I'm going to use your words because they're powerful. Inherent is in his comment is, how can I make the other person be different? This person keeps bouncing between, a com- uh, between uh, confrontation and avoidance, which are called as what? Passive aggressive. And what you're saying is, how can I get them off the dime? You don't. You respond appropriately, such as, it seems like you're kind of going back between confrontation and avoidance. Am I missing something, or is that what you're doing? Because I don't really know where to go with this. You kind of admit the fact you're a little helpless right now. I'd love to chat with you about this, but then you just shut down and don't talk to me. I'm, I'm not sure where to go. Am I missing something? Am I missing something is great. The number one desire people have is to be heard. As a coach, it's all the time, and I say it all the time now, do you get the sense that I'm listening to you? If the answer is yes, we're good to go. If the answer is no, what am I missing? But when we're so hot and bothered, when we're on that side to, to in it to win it, we're not going to ask that question. Help me understand what I'm missing. And that's opening the kimono. Got it. Other questions? Oh, when I was at your table, you guys are firing them away. I don't want to talk in public. Anything at all? Interesting. Hmm. No one likes talking to group. Okay. Yep, yep. So you mentioned uh, a few times ago um, a class taught by Jim Rohn called Conflict Resolution. Um, I consider myself like a real master of it. And he really divides it into what you know, strategy and analysis is to think about when you're thinking about your team and your operating and your team and your team and your strategy and how to get your team to work together. Um, and Jim is really good at that. For those of you who might not have heard him, he said he perceives that his processing sped, which is called cognitive, his cognitive is faster than the person you're with or that anybody else. What's that? People in general. So in, no judgment, no shame, no condemnation. His cognitive is higher than the people he comes in contact with is what his perception is. Cognitive is not how smart you are. 
IQ is how smart you are. It's set at the age of nine. Cognitive is how fast I process things, how fast I come up with new concepts, how fast I get instructions, how fast I can change from one thing to another. That can be developed. It's not set in stone, IQ is. It's not set in stone. And so what he's saying is he's perceiving that he thinks faster than some people, maybe most people, maybe whatever. I like to use metaphors all the time. Imagine that you and I are on our, on our you and I are riding bikes together, and my goal is to stay with you on your, with, in our bike ride. But I'm a world-class bike racer, and I want to take off like a rocket. What have I got to do? I've got to check my speed to go as fast as you. The person with the greatest passion has the greatest amount to lose. I have to check my speed, because I really want to go fast, but I want to be with you. And so I have to slow down. And so I go your speed. And so the answer is, slow down to the person who goes the slowest. You can say, come on, let's go faster. Come on, let's go. Why can't you just think like I think? Because I don't think like you think. My wife needs a long lead time to think about things because she's so analytical. I don't. I can make things on the fly. I can make snap decisions. I can make impulsive decisions right and wrong. She wants to make sure it's right. <clears throat> she can't make a quick judgment. I go her speed. I'm not saying she has low cognitive. She has a high need to put things in boxes. Let's go over a couple of the verses in the, in, in the book. Um, and I just want to sort of draw your attention to this. This is on the last page of the reference to this thing in your book. These are just a couple. I would encourage you to do your own word search on conflict, quarrels, or anything along that nature. Proverbs 13.10. This is New Living Translation. Pride leads to conflict. Those who take advice are wise. Pride is a huge element of conflict. I can't be wrong. I can't be wrong. Stereotypically, that's more classic a male trait than a female trait. Not always. I can't be wrong. Pride. What do I need? I need to be right. Not healthy. Leads to conflict. Open the kimono. I'm vulnerable. I admit it. 15, 18, a hot-tempered person starts fights. A cool-tempered person stops them. A couple tables were like this concept of rules of engagement. If I'm really hot, if I'm really hangry, if I'm really sad, if I'm really distraught, if I'm emotionally out of sorts, is not the time to talk about where should we go on our vacation. It's just not appropriate. Or how should we spend a budget? It's not appropriate. However, if I always play that card, when the conversation gets too difficult, that's called manipulation. Here's a fact I'd put in your notes. The person who talks the most dominates the conversation. But it's important, you'll want to remember this. The person who talks the most dominates the conversation. The person who listens the most controls it. The person who talks the most dominates the conversation. The person who listens the most controls it. Right now, I'm, I'm talking the most. I'm dominating the conversation. When I asked for questions, you were all silent. To a certain degree, you controlled that portion of it. If I just stopped talking and started staring at you, I could own this room. <laughs> True story. Awkwardly enough in time, you just get up and walk out. What's left to do? I don't know how to handle this guy. He just stopped talking. Some of you have mastered that in the art of marriage. <laughs> There's a place for silence, but it would help if you said, you know what, I, I, I can't go there right now. Give me a minute. Now is not the time. So talking really relieves a lot of the pressure. Proverbs 26, 20, fire goes out without wood, and quarrels disappear when gossip stops. The wood is the stuff that we keep stoking in this relationship, we keep stoking in the argument, and maybe it's a good time just to stop the argument. I've said that so many times 
that you think my only way of managing conflict is just to avoid it and get out of it. I'm not saying that. But there is a time where you're so emotionally charged, it's not a conversation anymore. It's not a logical conversation. You cannot have a logical conversation with the illogical person. You cannot have a logical conversation with the illogical person. If somebody is out of their mind right now, there's not dialogue going on. It's monologue. You cannot have a logical person with the, a logical conversation with the illogical person. I'm not saying you're crazy. I'm just saying right now is not a good time for a logical conversation. Quarrels disappear when gossip stops. What is gossip? Somebody talking about somebody else. If you've got an issue with John, go to John. Talk to John. No, I'll talk to Mary about John. Okay. Greed causes fighting, Proverbs 20, 15. Greed causes fighting. Trusting the Lord leads to prosperity. Greed, what do I need? We're back to the needs part. We're back to the needs part. Speaking here to the married people, or those of you who are considering getting married, as I've said before, because I was here for some of the marriage conferences, uh, there's a great book. I didn't plan on talking about this. My mind is not as strong with memory as it should be. Sacred Marriage, Gary Thomas. Sacred Marriage. The friction in marriage is what makes me holy. Sacred Marriage, Gary Thomas. Marriage is designed to make you holy. Marriage is designed to make you holy. Conflict is friction. It's the friction in marriage that sands me down and sands me down and sands me down and creates in me the holiness of God. Not fun at all, but necessary. There's a couple other sources of information there. I'll let you go or I'll entertain more questions, and your silence will get you out of here quicker. And it's Friday night. <laughs> person that talks the most dominates the conversation. The person that listens the most controls it. The outcome, his question was, which one controls the outcome? The answer is neither. The outcome is a function of words. I'll control the outcome if I just stop and stare at you. But we haven't really done anything. I'm just avoiding it. If it's all I ever do is to sit and stare at you, we haven't really processed anything, we haven't worked on anything, I'm just not going to talk to you. And so I've kind of controlled it in a manipulative way, but we haven't really solved it, resolved anything. Work is different but necessary because it depends on my role in work. If I'm a leader at work and if the buck stops on my shoulders and I have to figure out how we're going to move this bus forward, then my quietness might just be gathering information, gathering information, gathering information, and then I might distill that. Okay, here's the direction we're going to go. Based on what you five people have said, here's the way I think we ought to go. And so it's different work but necessary at work, and this, somebody else asked me that. This does apply to work and a different mode might apply to work. And this is also different with toddlers. Somebody else asked me that. We're not having a level-headed conversation with a five-year-old. It's a five-year-old. You're raising them, but you're not raising your spouse. I know some of you, it's a surprise. What, really? We're not raising our spouse. We're raising kids. And so we're not raising our coworkers, but we're leading our coworkers. And so we've got to figure out how to negotiate with them in, in a perfect world collaboration. And I might be silent because I want to draw input from other people. But it's, not, it's more complex. It's not a simple thing like that. We're yeah, just figure it out. It just depends. It just depends. What's your default mode? I tend to talk too much or I tend to listen too much? In both of those, there's a ditch on both sides of those roads. Other questions? It's Friday night, I know, but I can go all night. I love this topic. Yeah. In the beginning, you talked about the shared things, different figures, and 85% of us think we're aware. 13 to 15 percent of us really are. So, if you're so many, so I don't know, I, I, how can you, how can you, I, 
I do. If you want to know how your hair looks, what do you do? Well, not you, but the average person wants to know how their hair looks. <laughs> if you want to know how your hair looks, you look in a mirror. If you want to know how your personhood shows up, how you present yourself, how people see you, you ask for feedback. Last night, role playing. Last night, you and I got into a pretty good fight, and I wasn't comfortable with it. Help me understand what my role was in that, because maybe I'm not aware of my role. That's hard to say, but you're going to get a mirror. Yeah, you were like on top of me last night. You would not let me speak. You had to have your last opinion. You wouldn't, whatever. I'm making a, a catastrophic example. But what I do as a coach is I, bring, I hold up the mirror. So here's what I hear going on. It sounds like, ding, 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 ding. I just hold the mirror up from every angle. And people don't look in the mirror because they think everything's fine. And so what I'm trying to do in this thing is raise the awareness that maybe it is fine, Depends on the situation, work situation, home situation, kid situation, neighbor situation, daughter, sister, whatever. But maybe it's not always fine. And that thought of a tension between the issue and the relationship, like, gosh, I never thought of that before. I guess I tend to be more issue-oriented. Some of you really want to make sure it's done right. You have a passion, and I, this is beyond the scope of the, of, the, of the evening. I have analytics that I use with my folks that I can figure out how you're wired. And some of you are wired to get it right. Nothing personal, no shame in that, but I can't make a mistake. It's got to be right. It's got to be right. Well, you're going to be very argumentative because it's got to be right. I mean, it's just, it's got to be right. And some of you are big, yeah, it's good enough. It's close. It's fine. It, you know, it's good. We're good. Whatever you need, we're good. And you're going to be much more accommodating. Not right, not wrong. But the awareness piece is by asking somebody, you know, I didn't like the way I showed up in that meeting yesterday. What did you see in me? Or, this is a high level of emotional intelligence, put your head on the pillow at night. I didn't like the way I showed up at that meeting today. I wonder what I did that was inappropriate. Let me think this through. And I start doing my own self-reflection. I often do that at the end of the day. Lay my head on the pillow at night. How'd that day go for you? What'd you see that you liked? And how did you really blow it? I'm coaching all the time. I had, today was one of those days. I was coaching back to back to back to back. I need to be very aware of, was I... My goals, was I godly, professional, kind, loving, wise? Was I that? Oh, I might not have been that godly. I might not have been that wise. Self-reflection. Asking yourself the question. Look in the mirror. Brad's not here yet. We can't leave yet. I don't know what to do. You've been a great crowd. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.